I'm not ashamed. Does Deborah prove that God allows women preachers in the church today? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of Judges on walking through the Bible. Today we're going to be discussing Judges 4 verses 1 to 10, but before we do that, let's read the passage. If you have a Bible with him, turn to Judges 4 verse 1, but if you don't have a Bible, don't worry, just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So Judges chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. When Ehud was dead, the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, who reigned in Hatzor. The commander of his army was Sisera, who dwelt in Harosheth, Hagoyim. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord, for Jabin had nine hundred chariots of iron, and for twenty years he had harshly oppressed the children of Israel. Now Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, was judging Israel at that time. And she would sit under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the mountains of Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. Then she sent and called for Barak, the son of Abinoam, from Kedesh and Naphtali, and said to him, Has not the Lord God of Israel commanded, Go and deploy troops at Mount Tabor? Take with you ten thousand men of the sons of Naphtali and the sons of Zebulun, and against you I will deploy Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his multitude at the river Kishon, and I will deliver them into your hand. And Barak said to her, If you will go with me, then I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. So she said, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, there will be no glory for you in the journey you are taking, for the Lord will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. Then Deborah rose and went with Barak to Kedesh. And Barak called Zebulun and Naphtali to Kedesh, and he went up with ten thousand men under his command, and Deborah went up with him. Coming now to chapter 4, we have a time marker that is important for us to pay attention to, for it will become important that we recognize such construction later on in Judges. The time marker is Ehud was dead. Recall from the end of the last chapter that is the land of Israel had rest from its enemies for 80 years, which brought our chronology down to 1204 BC. This piece ended at this time because Israel went off into idolatry, as the beginning of chapter 4 says. In chapter 3, we find that the Lord raised up Shamgar to judge Israel, and he killed 600 Philistines with an ox goad. We noted that Shamgar seemed to judge southern Israel, who from time to time came under the influence of the Philistines, who dwelt in Gaza. At the same time, in northern Israel, God used a different king to subjugate Israel in order to punish them, Jabin, king of Hatzor. Back in Joshua 11, we found some 200 years earlier that it was the king of Hatzor that led an offensive against Israel as they moved north to conquer Canaan. This king was defeated and Hatzor was burned to the ground. It is obvious from Judges 4 that in the intervening 200 years that Hatzor was rebuilt, and not only that, but the Canaanites were the people who lived in it and ruled over it. That shouldn't surprise us, for remember, especially in the north of Israel, the Canaanites remained in large numbers, for Israel didn't completely expel them. The king of Hatzor was named Jabin, which is the same name as the king of Hatzor in Joshua 11, meaning that it could be that Jabin, which means the discerning, is the title for the king of Hatzor rather than his given name. In any case, having the same name as an ancestor is common today, so why would it have been uncommon then? The commander of Jabin's army was Sisera, who dwelt in Herosheth Hagoyim, a town likely situated in the Jezreel Valley within the borders of the land given to the tribe of Issachar. The affliction of Jabin and Sisera was fierce, for Jabin's forces had 900 chariots of iron, which again likely means iron-tipped chariots, where the iron would act like scythes that would cut down the enemy like a scythe cuts down grass. This oppression lasted for 20 years, bringing our timeline down to 1184 BC. It is after this hard oppression that Israel finally came to its senses and called out to the Lord for deliverance. And the Lord answered their plea, raising up Deborah, a prophetess and wife of Lapidoth, as a judge. Deborah is the only judge in this book who is a woman, and that should speak volumes about the lack of male leadership in northern Israel at this time. For even in this story, 
we're going to find that leadership tepid at best. With male leadership wanting in this area, God used a faithful woman to accomplish his purpose, just as he has done in numerous other places in the scriptures. In this case, his purpose was for Deborah to be a judge in Israel and for her to send the people his message. Note here that Deborah wasn't the ruler of the people, nor was she the commander of the army. She was God's prophetess and judge, hand-picked by God for this position. Some people use the example of Deborah to advocate for women preachers in the church today. But, is, but that is a misuse of scripture. It is clear from 1 Corinthians 14, 26-35, that a woman's role in the church is not leading the worship of the church, which would include public preaching for the congregation. A woman, though, is tasked to teach other women and children privately, as Titus 2, 3-5 would tell us, and a woman can participate in the work of the church in other ways, as Romans 16, 3-15 would indicate, but they are not permitted by God to be leading the church. If God had instructed otherwise, the scriptures would say so, but since they don't, we must follow what God has revealed. Here in Judges 4, God did raise up Deborah and did speak through her, so she is his authorized spokeswoman, and she judged the people under the palm tree located between Ramah and Bethel in the mountains of Ephraim, situated within the tribes of Benjamin and Ephraim. Now, when Israel sought deliverance from Jabin and Sisera, Deborah sent for Barak, who was, the, who was from Kadesh of Naphtali, and charged him with leading an army of 10,000 troops from Naphtali and Zebulun at Mount Tabor, as the Lord God had commanded, and Sisera would be delivered into his hand. Now the word of Deborah should have been enough for Barak to have faith, but it was not, for he said that he would only go up if she went up along with him. Such was the state of Israel at that time, where the word of the Lord was not trusted, even if that word came from his judges. Deborah agreed to come, but told Barak that the glory that would come by defeating Sisera would not come to him, for God would deliver Sisera into the hand of a woman the identity of which would be, would be revealed later on. That was quite a rebuke of Barak by Deborah, for at that time, women were seen as weak and unable to conquer the enemy. We'll continue with this story, the Lord willing, in the next lesson. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Judges chapter 4, verses 11 to 16, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world.